Hi everybody, it's Barbie from Nellie and Ruth Designs, and today we're going to have a little fun uh, creating. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for joining in, um, taking a look to see what is going on here, and for the new subscribers and for um, all the gals that have commented on past videos. I really appreciate it, and um, I'm glad you like so far what you see. So, um, today we're going to be creating these cute little um, bags in a box. And I cannot take credit for this, but I have made these since, oh gosh, probably 2017, late 2016. These were designed um, by Sam Hammond over at Poodles Paper Crafts. It's P-O-O-T-L-E-S Paper Crafts, and she's on YouTube. And I absolutely love all the boxes and all the little, all the little bags and things that Sam makes. I will put her link in um, my video, just because you should really, if you don't follow her or you're not familiar with her, uh, she's based in the UK, and I believe that she is, um, she's a Stampin' Up demonstrator. But she has such cute boxes and bags that she makes. So today we are going to make this. Um, I'm going to show you because I need, this is one of, well, I guess I could make myself one. But these are going to sit on my um, Christmas table uh, for Christmas dinner. And my, my husband, my two boys, and my daughter-in-law will be getting them. And you can fit either a um, lint chocolate, I call them lint chocolate balls. I know that's not, I don't know if they're, they're truffles or what, but they're the, you can actually fit two inside um, here, the little lint chocolates. But this year I'm putting in, um, this one has a York peppermint patty, which I can, I'll take out here so you can see the size. Um, and this these candies just came in the variety pack that you can buy, the big bags. So this here is, okay, this is a six ounce. And does it say on here? I don't know, but these are all, these are all tiny sizes. And these will fit right inside the box here. Um, we'll add a little embellishment. And then I have this December 25th stamp. And today we're going to be using... Um, the embossing powder on these. I like the way these feel and you could glitter them, but I think it just might make a little bit of a mess. Um, although I am the glitter queen and I do love glittering everything, but if you're gonna have it on your, your dining room table, um, I like to do the embossing powder. So um, let's get started on this. I cut these three ahead of time. You have to cut. Now, if you have a six by six inch um, paper pack, you can use that. However, you do have to cut it down because you just can't pull a six by six paper. The box, it's going to come out funky. So you have to um, cut these at five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And I always use, you don't have to, but I like to use a double-sided paper. Um, so let's, let's build these and then I will actually cut the paper. This is the paper I'm going to use right here um, for my daughter-in-law's little box. I thought this was really pretty. And then we have this plaid on the other side. I haven't decided if I'm going to do, um, I'll probably do the flowers for her. But we'll see once we get it cut. So I'm going to set that over there. And I did bring a cup of tea up with me today. So I took the dogs for a nice long walk this morning. And it was a it was a balmy 27 degrees. So um, I figured a nice cup of tea when I'm creating these would, would come in, warm my belly. So these are quite easy to make. And... If you want to take the, the measurements down, again, you need a piece of, of square paper that's five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. Do not use a six by six. It will not come out. So again, the first punches are the most important because 
I'll, you'll see why afterwards. So your first punch, this is the um, We Are Memory Keeper envelope punch board. And Sam does make a lot of uh, cute boxes using this. But I just, I love these. I just love these little bags in a box. So I'll set that there. Um, so your first punch is going to be at one and seven eighths. So here's your one mark and then your seven eighths. So you're going to put your paper. Oh, and I will tell you, I will tell you another thing. Um, and I always have a hard time figuring out what, if you have, you're not going to want to use, I'll call it a uniform pattern because when you make, you when you create your box, it's going to be upside down, sideways, you know, vertical. So try to use a plaid, a floral, um, Swiss dots, stripes, whatever you might want to use. But to use a uniform pattern, or if you see cute, uh, like snowman or Santa, and they're all in a row, I, I wouldn't suggest it. Um, and then the other thing is when you punch, well, we'll talk about that when you start to fold. So the first punch is going to be at one and seven eighths. So here's your one and seven eighths mark. So you're going to punch and then you're going to take and you're going to score. You don't have to score really hard, just enough so you know. My girlfriend's left-handed and we made some of these when she was here from Virginia. And um, this obviously is made for a right hand person. And when she got back to Virginia, she got all her paper, she got her punch ready and she had to score with her right hand. And she says, I got a little heavy. And she says, I think I creased my paper too much. Cause when my mom, she goes, I had my mother in charge of folding them. They basically fell apart on her. Um, so don't score your paper too hard. Don't cut through. You can see here, I don't know if you can just see the line, the line here. So there's the one and seven eighths. And then you're going to move it down to four and five eighths. So right here. And you're going to punch again. And you're going to score. All right. Then you're going to turn your paper. And you're going to follow your score line right here. Here's your score guide. And you're going to line that right up. And I know it's kind of hard to see. So maybe on this one, I'll just crease it a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I don't know if that helped or not. But you're going to line it up here on that score. You're going to punch again. And you're just going to score down. And I will say, this is kind of hard to, uh, maybe it'll be better on the one I make for my daughter-in-law. Then you're going to come down and you're going to find your next score line. Once you make your first punch of one and seven eighths and four and five eighths, just disregard this up here. Don't try to line it up again. It's all based on where you score your paper, the other three sides. Okay, so let me do this here again for you so you can kind of see. So we're lining that up again on that score. And maybe at the, at the end of this, I will do it on plain paper. I'm sorry, this really wasn't a good choice to use. And then again, here's my, where I scored it. And I'm going to line it right up again where I scored. Punch, score. So here's where I scored it. Line that up. And you do, you just keep doing this until it's all the way around. Okay, here's. There's my score line right here. So it's kind of like right here on this. So I'll line this right up here for you. Punch it. And let me get a plane. We'll come back to this, but let me get, because this is kind of hard. Um, let me get a plane. Let's try it on my daughter-in-law's. No, I'm going to get a plain piece of paper. Um, no, I'll just cut. Sorry. I'm so indecisive. Let's try it on my daughter-in-law's. So let's cut this. I might be able to do it on the blue. So we're going to do five and seven eighths. So here's, and I'm not trying to, 
um, humiliate anybody. Or, I have a really hard time with measurements. I'm not really good at it. And I'm sure other women out there get confused. So if you have on your, um, your cutter, um, you've got one, two, three. Here's your inch. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So this would be five and one eighth five and two eighths, you know, five and a quarter, five and three eighths. So this one is five and seven eighths. So you just count over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's your five and seven eighths. And it took me a long time. Um, there's a little rip here, so I'm not going to do that side. It took me a long time to figure it out. Like I said, I am not real good with measurements, and but I have learned to use a ruler a lot over the years, and the 16ths and the 8ths and the whatever. Okay, so there's 5 and 7 eighths, and then again, 5 and 7 eighths. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 5 and 7 eighths. So see, it is just shy of your six by six paper and Sam really makes that clear do not use a six by six piece of paper because these will not come out all right these are my little end clippings all right so let's see if maybe you can see a little bit better on this one hopefully you can and it might be the lighting as well um so again we're going to start at one and seven eighths punch it and score. I'll try to go a little bit deeper. Then we go four and five eighths. So there's the four and five eighths right there. All right, this you, you'll be able to see a little bit better. There's your score lines. Now you are just going to pop this in where it's been scored. And here's our other score line. Okay, and then you're going to turn it again so you can see the score lines here. Turn it again. And if I put my hand, it is the lighting, so if I put my, make a little shadow here, I think maybe you can see the line a little bit better. I know my bright light city lights are... I need for the video sometimes and again here's your see here's your score line so you're going to line that you're going to line that right up there so I think you might be able to see here as I make a shadow punch and score don't forget to score again okay there's the score line see there's the score you're going to line it up punch And then again, you're going to come down. All right, see? There's your other one. And there you have it. There's your pattern. So we can set this aside and get rid of these. And then the other thing that you have to do, which I often forget, is you have to round your corners when you're done. So you just stick it up here in your, they call it a reverse punch, but. I call it my rounding punch. Okay, I'm going to do this on all of them because I will forget. All right. And I think I'll, I'm just going to round these to start. I better score this. Of course, that shouldn't make, that shouldn't be a problem. Well, there's a first time for everything. And I'm actually making this video on my, on my Treasure Tuesday, which went up this morning, and it's my Tuesday Treasure uh, video went up this morning and it's all about my blue and white junk journal so be sure to check in and take a look at that too um okay 
So the next thing that we have to do, and again, what I'm going to do, just so you can see, we have to cut this. I'm going to, and I'll, I'll explain why it has to be cut, has why it has to be trimmed, so it can all fold neatly together. So I'm just going to fold these up so I know where my score lines are. And um, I have a little... I have a little box here that I keep on my desk. I keep all of my little, I keep all my little dresses in it. That's another good use for these, is if you have something, some ephemera or stamp pieces um, that you get, to, you want to get to all the time or go through, I just, this was a leftover box and I keep them in here. But um, I can show you, because this one is all tied up, but I can really show you this here, how it, it has to be cut so it can you can make these folds and it comes together. And then this is the outside box with a little bag inside. So you want to take your larger tabs and you're going to take your scissors and let's see, I think I can grab these. My daughter-in-law is here wrapping Christmas presents just below me, so I gave her my big scissors. Um, so you're going to take your two large tabs because these are the large tabs are going to be the ones that are actually standing up that you're going to open and close the box with. And you're just going to cut down. You're going to follow that line. And once you get going on these, you can really mass produce these. So if you have a big family, don't think, oh my goodness, it's going to take me forever to make these. And these are just really cute to put in your Christmas tree as well put you know especially for little kids you could put gold coins in here um, you could do so much so now you have your you have this is actually going to be your bag and then this is going to be the box and see how see how easy that is it just folds right up all right and then you have two options you can either fold these inside and you can just have everything like this so it's plain on the outside, or you can fold them back. I like to fold them back, all right? Um, and I do that with, where's my tape? I had it out here. Um, I use mini dots. And I'm not sure what I did. These are big dots, those are the big dots. Let's see, are these mini, these are the larger dots. Oh, here's my mini dots right here. Is that, nope, big. Oh, here's my mini dots right in front of my face. So <clears throat> I like to take a mini dot and I just put one here and I fold it back. And you can also, um, you know, if you want to antique these up with your, with your brush, you can. I kind of like to just leave them plain, all right? So we're going to fold this up like this. You're going to fold these around. And again, you're going to use a mini dot. I like to put one. We're going to put one on the bottom here. So you're going to fold it up, and this one will be on the outside, obviously. So there's your first. We're going to add another. I'm going to add another dot here. Okay. And if you want to, you can add another dot right behind here. I did on this one but you don't, you really don't need to. It just leaves it a little bit looser, but if you want to save on your mini dots. And then I have a half inch punch, okay? This came from Stampin' Up. I really like their, their punches. So you're going to bring your two tops together. And you're just going to make a little, stick it 
in here. And you're just going to make a little punch. Okay. So now you've got your, you have your um, bag in a box. And you see how cute these fit in here? And then you can tie it up. This one, I, I won't, that's, I'll put this one like this so it sticks out a little bit so they know they've got a little piece of candy in there. So you have that one. And then we'll make, let's, let's do, let's finish these. And then we'll do some um, embossing. So let's just bring this back over. So, and again, because it's um, the same measurements all around, it doesn't matter where you start. So we're going to start again at one and seven eighths. And this is why you do not um, round your corners before you punch. Because see how that comes around, but I'm just kind of eyeballing it. So one and seven eighths, score, and four and five eighths. All right. All right. And now we're just going to follow the follow the bouncing ball. I remember when I was a kid, speaking of following the bouncing ball, I don't remember what show it was on. I don't know if it was Freddie Freihofer or the Mickey Mouse Club. Um, when you had the sing-alongs, they had the little ball that went from word to word. Okay, here's the, right here is the little um, score line. And again, you can't really see it here, but the score line is right here. And you kind of, can kind of feel it, too, if you have a paper that you're not quite sure. It's hard to see. And maybe you just won't pick a plaid like I did. All right, here's right here. Right there. Okay, so that one's done. Let's do this one on this side. That way, I'm still going to use the, the plaid, um, but maybe you can see a little bit better. So here's the one, one five eighths. And see, I did that wrong. It's supposed to be one and seven eighths. So we're going to set this aside. That's a nice scrap, um, but that's okay because I do have my three boxes for my boys. And then this is for my daughter-in-law. So, see, that's what happens when you talk too much, when you're trying to do a project. Okay, so, that I can use for some ephemera. This we're going to clean off. Okay, so again, we are going to, once you have everything punched, you're going to fold it, just to get where all those creases are, or all your score lines. All right. Then you're going to, again, take, you're going to take your, and I'm going to do it on this side because you might be able to see the lines a little bit better. It's the, the large flap you're going to cut down on each side. Just follow that score line and make your cut. Here. And I'm going to do this one also. This one might be a little bit easier for you to see. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut before I even... I'll, I'll do this. I will fold for you. But again, I will have, I will have this part out. So, all right. So you want your larger tab. So we're going to cut... If you have a long pair of scissors, um, which I put mine away, um, 
Sometimes you can do it just in one, one fell swoop. Okay, so those are cut. So we can do, let's do this one. So this is going to go up. these a little bit these will go in these I will I will um, paste back the little tabs here so one here this is a good project to do if you're if you like to watch Netflix when you craft, like I do. Um, because you really don't have to, it doesn't require too much thinking at all. Just that initial punch where you don't want to punch it one and five eighths like I did. And then here's here's our, our other little box. We'll put a little one there. Okay, we'll set that there. Bring this up. These really are cute. You know, if you if you work in an office and you like to give everybody a little something what's a paper pack a six by six paper pack costs what maybe um six dollars now on this one here this seems to be moving a little bit more so i am going to add one little one little sticky dot on each side so Mars doesn't and make sure you get it down far enough you don't want it if you if it's going to if you don't get it down hopefully you can see this below this line then it's going to stick to your little bag in here and you don't want that so we will make our little hole punch okay And, oh, this one right here. Okay. So we have a absolutely, it snowed last night. And yeah, it was pretty cold this morning when we got up. Um, and then when I walked my girls today, on the way home at 10 o'clock this morning, it was a balmy 27. Um, but it was actually really, it was a beautiful morning. I take them along a river road. Well, not take them along the river. Um, and we go for a nice four mile walk. And it was just so pretty this morning. It was, there's always ducks, ducks in the river doing their thing. Floating along. It always amazes me how that down on their bodies keeps them keeps them so warm because that water is cold okay so see how easy see how easy these are and you can cut your paper all ahead of time or um you know make make your boxes all in one day and then you can embellish you can embellish another day. All right, so the boxes are done. They're all assembled, put together. And now we're going to, we're going to make the same. Um, these will be a little different. And I got this out of these Simple Story chipboard stickers. So I have this one here we can choose from. This one I thought was fun. This is Cartabella. Cartabella, and then another Simple Stories. So we can find some cute little embellishment to go on each one. 
these little packages are cute i like those packages all right so i'm sure you have all used embossing powder before and last night i was playing around um, because i wasn't sure what color i wanted but i really like this this gold and um I made a gold one and I wanted to show you, I didn't cut it because I wanted to show you, last night I could not find my little, um, I called a little chalk, I called a little chalk pad, but you use these when you do your embossing and it stops, it basically stops it from doing this you get a nice clean image um i didn't use it on this one because like i said i couldn't find it you can see how the embossing powder how it runs together and i don't like that i wouldn't use that um so but i did want to show you the difference between if you don't use this and using using that so I did a red one last night but I I really think I like the gold so I think we'll try a gold so I'm just going to and you just kind of pat this it's like a it's like a uh, powder puff so this is the Versamark watermark stamp pad and you use this it's a clear um, I'm not going to call it an ink. So it doesn't show up on here, but maybe with the light, you can see it. It's actually right, right here. But you'll see it once we get the embossing powder. And I always take a piece of paper to do this on, and then I put the excess. back in the tube. All right. So this will go on. Make sure you cover the whole thing. And yes, I have spilled a whole tube before doing this, trying to be extra careful. And I just give it a little flick on this side. And then the powder goes right back in because, like I said, I have been known to tip over an entire vial. Okay. So this is what it looks like with the embossing powder on there before we put the heat to it. So I'm going to heat up my, get my heat gun going. And I'm sure you'll be able to see um, how it changes. It doesn't take very long and you have to be careful so you can see how it's kind of shiny it's actually very shiny when it's not maybe you can see it there when it's not in this light right there um, you have to be careful as well I've been known to if I have a larger image that I've stamped um, to burn the paper and I've just left it in one spot too long, and that wasn't that wasn't good. Okay, so I think I'm going to use the red. I'll use the red on my daughter-in-laws, and then I'm going to use the gold on both of my um, on my boys here. I use the red on. I can use that for my husband, and then I'll use I'll use the gold on my boys. So I'll do this. Two more times. 
and again I'm not going to use that because what did I forget to do I forgot to use this so let's start down here okay because if I use that one up there and I'm going to just cut that out and get rid of that um, it would just slot it would all melt together and we can't have that so let me get my paper we'll get the gold back I think I'll just be careful. I'll set that there for the next one. Get this heated up. And you can kind of see right away how it turns shiny. Yeah, party. So party. Okay, and then we will get this one. You'd think that um, this is also a Stampin' Up stamp. I love it. It came in a set. Don't ask me what set it came in, and I'm also probably sure that they don't make it anymore um, when I get done with this I have to take my my youngest doodle this week I I got to get him ready with baths and a haircut and my younger one she has totally different hair Doodles have hair. They don't have fur. Her hair is totally different than her big sister's. Um, and it usually takes me about three days to groom Daisy because she gets knotted up and it's like combing dreadlocks and thinning dreadlocks from underneath her um, top coat. Before I heat this... There's just a little bit, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bit here. Now, hopefully, that won't stick it here because of the powder. We'll see. Yeah, and I'm not crazy about that way that came out, so I'm going to do it one more time. So I'm going to try to get her on the grooming table after I get done with this because they'll probably take me um, the rest of the afternoon just to comb out her two back legs. And she's tiny. She's a tiny little girl too. But the way they play, they, you know, bite each other and um, they just get knotted up. And I can't stop the two of them. I can't stop the two of them from playing because puppies need to play. And Daisy is a puppy. She is definitely a two-year-old puppy. Okay, that one's a little bit better. That's good. That's fine. Are my boys really going to notice? No. Are they really going to say something to me about 
my embellishing. No, I'm not even going to look at these boxes. They're just going to dig in for that candy. All right, so I'll set that aside. I'm going to take the two. So this will be for, this one's for my daughter-in-law. We have this one here. And I'm going to use this one. So two and one more. I'll use this top one. Okay. All right. So again, as far as cutting these, it's no... I try to make it as easy on myself as I can. And remember when you cut... To turn your paper do not turn the or turn your turn the paper do not turn your scissors I don't really know and make sure your scissors are sharp because if they aren't, then you're just going to rip your paper. But and I just use my little, the same punch that I use because um, I don't like using my scissors for the corners. So there's one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if my mother taught me that. She was the, I think, the queen of fussy cutting before fussy cutting was a thing because she would take Hallmark greeting cards. She would buy them back in the 70s and 80s. And she loved her flowers and birds. That's probably where I get it from. And she would fussy cut beautiful See, there I turned my scissors. I cut with my scissors, not with the paper. That's why it doesn't come out. Um, she would cut beautiful images, and she decoupaged eggs. Beautiful, beautiful eggs. And um, the eggs that she gave me and the eggs that she had after she passed away, they're on my Christmas tree. But she... <clears throat> She was constantly cutting something, and she didn't do it with an X-Acto knife. She did it all with scissors, and I have all of her um, little fussy cut items that um, she never got around to using, and they'll end up going in a junk journal of mine. And I thought today, too, I don't know if I was on the walk. I'm constantly thinking about art. <laughs> I don't know if I was in the shower after I got home, but it was when I was on the walk. Um, I was thinking about the um, plastic canvas, the small little plastic canvas um Christmas decorations, the flat ones like snowmen, and she made a Santa Claus, Mrs. Claus, and they're they're probably four by six, the size of a, a picture. And I think I'm going to take those because she made them in triplicates and um because she gave them to my brothers, my sister-in-laws, me. I'm going to take her extra ones and I'm going to make tags and I'm going to adhere those to the front of a tag and then I can put them in a Christmas junk journal for next year because again, once again, this year I've not made, I didn't do a December daily. I've never made one of those. I've never made a, uh, I've made Christmas scrapbooks, but never a junk journal. So. All right, so we have we have all of our little 
December 25th cut out. So this is where we start to wrap it up. Um, all right, so I think four. And I'm gonna put these on with uh, pop dots. And actually, I'm going to use, I'm going to use these up. I don't ever throw these away because these come in just as handy. Um, especially if you use, if there's a certain thing that you have to use your pop dots for, if you're creating. And these are just, these work just as well. So you can just put that on the. I'm going to just move this a little bit. I think I'm going to put it on like this. So see? And I will put... I'm going to flip this around so this is on this side. I'll put that one there. Let's get my daughter-in-law's on here. I will get my daughter-in-law. There's hers. Okay. Um, we will use, okay, we have this one here, remember? And then we have this one. My craft dust, when I get done doing something, it's just <sighs> looks like a bomb went off. I'm sure most everybody's looks like that as well. I like to put, um, if I'm going to put a little, if I'm going to put this on, on here. I like to put it on this where, where it comes down here. Then I can put the embellishment on this side and um, I can put it right here and it kind of covers and helps secure that. So, all right, so we have our little boxes here. I'll take that little piece of candy out for now. Um, I even like this little happy holiday. So let's take this out. All right. So the jingle is cute too. Spread a little cheer. That's a little too big. All right, so let's go with, I think these packages are adorable. Yeah. Let's see what else. I'd like to add something else. I do like the packages, but I'd like to add a little something else to them. I like this. This is cute. I like this one. I'm going to put that. I'm going to put that right there like that. I think that's cute. Um, the packages. Let's see, is there something else other than, I really want to use these. Um, you know, I think these are cute. I'm going to leave them just like this. But I would like to put a little something behind it. I don't want to use any Tim Holtz. I want to keep them a little more whimsical. Mm. I'm have to leave them a little bit more whimsical. I like that. I like the deer. And because this, yeah, I like the deer. And because this is um, going to be taller, I'm going to leave this right on his reindeer on the um, antlers. 
So I'm just going to make a cut across. That way the sticky won't. Yeah, that's cute. That'll be cute. All right, so we have the little reindeer. And maybe I'll put these two for my... My daughter-in-law loves to shop. So maybe I'll do that for her. The two little presents. Yeah, I think this will be cute for her. That girl does like to shop. All right, and when you can't, sometimes these are kind of hard and I don't want to peel the, um, oh, she's here. Now I can hear her down, downstairs. She's here to wrap some presents. Okay, let's see. There we go. I love my X-Acto knife. Oh, yeah, this is cute. All right, so there's the little boxes. Okay. So, I'm going to put this in for my son. All right, and I'll show you how I make the little make that it's just a little different i'm going to stick this york peppermint patty back in here without having to take it apart there we go there we go all right so I got four rolls of this. I had a gal in California. Oh, she's a sweetie pie. Um, I bought some vintage patterns from her. And next thing I know, I had four rolls. I had a green. This is like a, a red. I have a cream color and I think black she sent me. She goes, I don't use them. And I figured that you, you could definitely put them to good use. So I'm just measuring across like this. I don't know how many... Um, inches, but I figured this would just be a cute. And then I'm just folding it in half, folding it in half again, and folding it in half again. And then I'm going to put it through like this. Bring it up through. And then I'm going to snip the end off. And that's all that there is to, to that. I'm going to lay these flat so you can see them amongst my mess. Let's just snow plow that off. Let's move this stuff. Get rid of my Versamark. There. Now we have a clean slate. All right. So we have that there. And we'll do it again. So you can improvise. You can, you know, you could, these would be really cute if you wanted to collage the front. Um, you could add buttons. There's so many things that you can do. Um, and if you do make these, I'll add a candy to these in a little while. So I'm not going to cut the tops on these, but I will just add the string um, make sure you give Sam a heads up or post it or mention her um, because she really does like to see people making her crafts and she's a great she's a great demonstrator um, with stamping up and she just makes the most wonderful boxes and bags I mean, and she's just got a great personality too. So she's she's a pleasure to watch. I'm gonna cut these. There you go. So that's today's video. Um, I hope you make these yourself. Make them for family, make them for friends. They're great for coworkers. They're just really, really, really cute little 
really cute little boxes. So um, if you like this video, let me know. If you make any, let me know. Let Sam know that you've made them. Um, I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. I will be making more fun items. Um, I don't know if I'll be making more before Christmas. It is getting close, and I, I do have some things that I, other things I need to work on and do. But um, again, thanks for joining in, everyone. I really appreciate it. Um, have a wonderful holiday, and I'll see you in my next video. Okay, bye-bye.